So we all know we can use a simple white piece of paper to make traditional sumagashi. But what I wanted to experiment with a little bit, just because I love natural dyes and love natural inks, was could I, how would these inks react and this process react if I used a naturally dyed paper? So I, in this video, I'm showing you a little bit how I go about making some natural dyes, including a tea bath, a, a black bean dye, and an avocado dye. And that allows us to get some lovely rusty hues in terms of the tea bag, a nice um, just soft blue color with the black bean, and then some nice blushy pink colors with the avocado dye. So I hope you enjoy it and get something out of it. And just take a look and enjoy. Thanks. When I get ready to have a dye day, because it really does take me some time, at least a few hours to get everything prepped, uh, I, I like to go all in. And when I mean all in, I mean not only will we be dyeing papers for sumonagashi today and other types of processes, I like to throw in old book pages, photocopies of photographs, different types of paper, maybe even actual photographs, because I, I do this only a few times a year and it's just really fun to have a variety of things that have been dyed, see how they all turn out, and then you have them ready for your next project. So what I do to get started is I usually sort out a bunch of papers that I want. So I get old book pages in a pile. I get uh, craft paper and copy paper and tea bags and Japanese rice paper. I get it all out in different piles and I sort them into bunches and this bunch has got a variety of pages and I flip it over because I like to start with um, some thicker pages on the bottom and disperse them as well. So we have thick mixed with thin because when you pull it all out of this wet goopy mess after it's been sitting for a few days they can be really delicate. There's just some really delicate papers in here. So I like to have them attached to more stiffer cardstock so when I pull it out, they don't rip. So in front of us, we have a tray that I found at the dollar store. We have about 25 tea bags, uh, black tea that I'll be using for the, the tea bath. Again, there will be probably many ways to do a, a tea bath or a tea dyeing. This is, I'm showing you my way today. And I have some hot water boiled off to the side. I have my papers ready to put in. And I'm just gonna begin by putting in this hot boiling water into this plastic tray. And it's probably gonna get very steamy. I might drop in a few tea bags initially here just to make sure there's something going towards the bottom. Some of the, the, the red, the tag, um, I've noticed, I just pull it off as well because I don't, I don't want it to fall into the tea bath. That's happened to me before and it kind of, the paint on it or the covering, the red part kind of tends to bleed off onto everything. Um, I'm gonna swoosh these around a little bit, pull them up to the sides and start to drop in my paper. This is boiling hot water. So I probably need to get my little poker stick. I just have a little big, a little wooden spoon here. And I do do it page by page. I've made the mistake in the past. Well, it's not a mistake because it's all, it's all important to learn. But if I just throw the whole clump of paper in there together, some of the pages don't get wet and they don't receive any of the dye baths. So I, I tend to do it page by page. Pouring in more water. Ooh, it's getting steamy around here. Now look, I've got a few of these copy papers in here. Um, and I'm going to put in a few pieces of tissue paper right next to those. Layer those in. And just build up this, these layers of different papers, trying to get them all um, wet. Maybe get some of the bubbles out if necessary. There's another thick piece of like, it gets a watercolor paper. And that's gonna help a lot when I pull some of these finer, um, papers out. Again, when the whole 
clump is ready to be pulled out of the dye bath here in a few days, it's just gonna make it easier for me to grab onto. I have some layers of the Japanese paper, the rice paper that just soaks it right up. And I just take my time getting all of these in the dye bath. And I'm gonna put some more hot water in. I might have to heat up some more water. This is an old photograph of my mom that I put just on normal printer paper. By the end of this process, I'll probably have put in the entire box of tea, which are roughly 24, 25 um, little tea bags. Yeah, there is no exact the recipe for this, I would say. Others will do it in a different way. I like to do it like this. This is looking pretty good. I'm just adding the last tea bags on the top here. I might top it off here with just a tad more water. So after these have sat in their tea bath for roughly two days, I'll take them out clump by clump, little batches of them, out of this soupy mess. It'll be very delicate, so I don't ever try and separate them while they're wet. That will pretty much ensure that they will tear. I just wait. I hang them in clumps, and it really is just a matter of waiting another day or two as they dry. It makes it very easy for me to peel them apart. But let's set these aside for now and get on to the next dye bath. In this next dye bath, we'll be using black beans to bring out a nice Tiffany blue color. Like the tea bath, I'll be just adding hot water to this, carefully adding the pages one by one, making sure that they're all submerged in the water. And I'll also be adding the black beans as we go. I'll be sprinkling some on the bottom, as well as some alum. Here we have about roughly 10 grams of alum, or one tablespoon. And this is roughly one cup of dried black beans. I would assume any black beans will do. These are Italian black beans. Anything that you can find dried in your supermarket should work well. So I'm going to start by sprinkling some of these on the bottom. Pouring in some hot water. This is just normal tap water. And I have my pages here. I have some of the thicker stiffer ones here that I'll be adding first. Again, layer, layering them as I go, dropping them in, and also sprinkling in a little alum. We'll sprinkle some on here in a bit. I'm using alum because it is a mordant. It helps plant and animal dyes and fibers bond with other fibers. So you would use it in dyeing cotton fabrics, silk fabrics, and it's common for for the textile industry, especially natural dyers, to use a mordant. But it, it also works well with paper and it can help brighten the dye a bit. I, that, at least that's what I found. I am going to sprinkle a little bit. It's not toxic, but you may want to wear gloves. I have never had a problem with using alum. See a purple color is already starting to come out. Now again, I'm using roughly a cup. I might add some more. I don't mind that the beans are kind of all over the place, although I am gonna try and keep them towards the edges. Adding more water. Probably could have mixed this all together at the beginning <laughs> with the water, but I didn't. We'll see how that goes. 
but it will soak for several days and I will be pushing it and smushing it and pouring in on, on this hot water. So it should mix a bit here. We'll add some tea bags. photos of my kids that I printed out. Um, I always like adding these elements. I'm going to sprinkle another half a cup over the top. Add more. And top it off with some more water. So I added a few more handfuls of beans over the top, topped it off with a little bit more boiling water, and I'm gonna set this aside as well. All right, so now it's time to get cooking. We are going to make a batch of avocado dye. We will be using roughly a cup of avocado stones or pits, and a cup of avocado skins. I froze these, I cleaned them and put them in the freezer. They've been there for about a month. I ate my avocados little by little and I put this, clean the skins and the pits and put them in a freezer bag and I've been keeping them for, for a month. You can use fresh skins as well, but one thing I would recommend sticking with a Haas avocado, something darker, tougher. The softer, greener skin avocados kind of break down the skins will break down in this heating process. These have more tannins and I've just found them to be a better option when making this type of dye. And you can see right away the reason why this dye works so well. It, so, there are so many tannins, these uh, molecules that bond with proteins and adhere to the, these fibers. They just already, you can see the, these particular ones in avocados already have a very intense reddish color. And we're going to add a little sodium carbonate to help bring out those reds and those pink tones. Sodium bicarbonate, you can make at home with your own baking soda. What you'll need to do is sprinkle a few tablespoons of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, onto a baking tray. Open up a few windows, it's not toxic, but it might irritate um, your lungs a little bit or maybe be irritating to your pets or your children if you have some. So open up the windows just to make sure the air is going. Heat it at 200 degrees Celsius for about an hour and this will eliminate one of the mo molecules, sorry, I don't know which one, but it goes from a sodium bicarbonate to carbonate and that's what we'll be using again today. So to get started, we're just going to add these stones right to a pan. This one I just found in a thrift stop shop. You just wanna use one that you probably won't use again for your normal cooking. I have a little hot plate over here. I didn't put, wanna put it directly under the camera because it was getting a little warm. So it's off to the side. I'm just going to fill it up with some normal tap water and put it on a low heat here until it starts to simmer. So this is just starting to simmer. The water is starting to become a little bit light brown. I'm going to add in a teaspoon of, so it's also called soda ash. I forgot to mention that. The sodium yeah, carbonate. I'm gonna give it a little stir here. And I'm gonna put it back on the heat and let this simmer for probably about at least 10 minutes here. We'll come back and check on it. So I just took it off the heat. It is a lot darker, but um, as each time I do this, there is some variation in how much tannins are possibly in the skins, how much water I used. I always have a little extra sodium carbonate nearby and I keep adding teaspoon by teaspoon, uh, 
amounts here to, to see if I can pull out some more of those pinky red tones. So I'm just adding another teaspoon. I'm gonna give it another stir. And I'm gonna put it back on heat. So I feel I'm getting some pretty nice dark orangey red tones. I think I can take it off of the heat and I'll just give you a little swish around of what's happening here. It's still, you know, it looks kind of greenish brown, muddy water, but as it oxidizes again, it will bring out these reddish pink tones. So taking it off the heat and I have my tray ready and I'm gonna just start by pouring some in, a little bit down here at the bottom. And for me, it's okay if I get a few bits in there. I just feel like it's okay to have some extra avocado bits. In fact, I'll be adding a few just to keep this kind of tannin process happening while they soak over the next few days. And just like the other dye baths, I'm going to be adding in my pages. I like to start with some heavy ones down at the bottom so it's kind of easier to grab the whole batch. I'll also bring in here a little tea kettle full of hot water to add to the mixture as well. So I just popped down to my kitchen and came back and you can see what a difference this makes just being exposed to oxygen. It's just going to turn that color this gorgeous pinkish red color. I'm actually gonna remove these for a second because I'm going to be adding some little delicate tea bags. So I have this strainer here just to help get some of the larger bits out. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. And again, I have these kind of very soft, delicate tea bags. I'm going to kind of protect them with another larger sheet, a heavier cardstock. And I am gonna add just a little bit of water. This is some hot water from a tea kettle. Now we have some Japanese rice paper. Again, another piece of hard cardstock. Or maybe this is a watercolor multimedia paper. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but something sturdy to protect those really soft layers. Adding two more sheets here at the very top of some copy paper. And I'm going to put this last little liquid over the top if there's anything left. And I'm gonna pull out a few of the pits because they don't disintegrate so easily and top it off with a little bit more hot water and leave this to soak here now for a few days. <laughs> 